Good afternoon and welcome. Today we begin a new series, Await. The Rambam, Maimonides, in his extraordinary Torah genius, was able to redact from the entirety of Torah 14 principles of faith. Pardon me, 13 principles of faith. The 12th principle is the belief of the coming of Mashiach. The Rambam also, in his Torah genius, was able to distill the ideas and ideals into halachic prose. That is to say, what are we obligated or responsible for in our duty towards Hashem? Torah, mitzvot, these aren't really electives, but rather mandates. They're obligatory upon us. When the Rambam tells us that we are obligated to believe in certain things, we also have to understand the halachic parameters. The purpose of this series is to define those parameters in a succinct way so that each of us can have an intensified, enhanced, and more appropriate fulfillment of our Yiddishkeit responsibility, our faith, our emunah, in Hashem and in His Torah. The twelfth principle is belief in the coming of Mashiach. What do we believe? What are we obligated to believe in? There's so much in the corpus of Torah about the coming of Mashiach and so little of it is easy to understand at least in a straightforward manner. What's literal? What's metaphoric? Most importantly, what's halachically binding? Our first episode will focus on man or moment. What is the most important part of our faith in Mashiach? And can we believe in a time of world peace, an era in which we will all know the presence of God, without actually believing in a man called Mashiach? Well, let's take a look and see what the Rambam says. In the conclusion of his magnum opus, Mishnah Torah, the 83rd segment of Halacha is called the laws of kings and their wars. Hilchas Melachim O Mochamis. In some versions, there's also an emphasis on U Mashiach, the king called Mashiach. This in and of itself is telling. The Rambam chose to conflate the laws about Mashiach, namely the era, under the title of Hilchas Melachim, Laws of Kings. Furthermore, in the 11th chapter, the second to the last of Mishnah Torah, the Rambam opens with the words, HaMelech HaMashiach Osid Lamoid Ulahagzir Malchus Beis David Liyeshna. The King Mashiach will arise. He is destined to arise and to restore the house, the royal house of David HaMelech to its former glory. The Rambam goes on to describe Mashiach as being the one who rebuilds the Beit HaMikdash and Mekabet Snidchi Yisrael. There's much to talk about and we will be Ezrat Hashem in the coming episodes. This is just the first of 120. I want to skip forward to where the Rambam begins to talk about the foundation, the source for this belief. The Rambam makes a statement. Anybody who doesn't believe, he doesn't say in the idea, but bo, bo means in him, o, one who does not await his coming, and we'll talk about that later. In doing so, he would not only be in denial of the other prophets, and there are many, but rather he's in denial of what we call Torah itself, the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, which contain all 613 mitzvot. Our sages tell us that there are only taryag mitzvot, as the Gemara tells us in Masechet Makot. All of those 613 mitzvot are contained within the pages of the five books of Moses. The later prophets, their purpose was to elucidate 
to highlight, to annotate, to clarify the essential messages of Moshe Rabbeinu. This is why when Mashiach comes, we won't really study the later scriptures because everything will be clear to us in that blessed era. The Rambam emphasizes that this is not something that the prophets began to speak of at a later time, but rather it is endemic to the foundation of Torah itself. Where do we see this? Where is Mashiach mentioned in the Torah? Most of us would tend to think of Mashiach as the Redeemer who undoes the damage of Galut. But here Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking to a redeemed people in the Sinai Desert who have not yet even assumed their rightful place in our eternal homeland, much less to have experienced exile from it. How then would he speak about Mashiach? Well, in fact, he does because Moshe Rabbeinu, towards the end of the book of Deuteronomy, looks deeply into the future and speaks to us about what awaits us. Shaharei, in the Rambam's words, Hatoira Ha'ida Alov. The Torah bears testimony upon him. Shenemar, for it is written. And this takes us to Deuteronomy 30, it's Pashas Nitzavim, verse 3. There it says, Veshov Hashem Elikecha Eshevuscha. The Torah says, and then God, your God, will bring back your exiles. Hashem will have mercy upon us. Vrichamecha. And Veshov Vikibetzcha Mikol Ho'amim Asher Hefitzecha Hashem Elikecha Shama. God will again gather you from among all the nations to which He, God, has dispersed us. In other words, as Rashi tells us, He will be returning His own divine presence which accompanies us into the exile back into our homeland, the land which He designated to be the setting in which He would demonstrate fully how this world can be made into a holy habitat, a dwelling for God. So clearly, the Torah itself, in Moshe Rabbeinu's voice, is speaking to us about the coming of Mashiach. Moshe Rabbeinu goes on to say, in verse 4, in hashamayim, If some of your exiles will be located in countries that are, proverbially speaking, at the end of the heavens, even then, Misham yikabetzcha Hashem elekecha. God, your God, will gather you from there. And, Misham he will take you, v'haviyecha, and he will bring you back. So the Torah itself is speaking to us about the coming of Mashiach. The Rambam now goes further and he says, in addition to these clear verses, which are found in Parshat Nitzavim, we also have other verses. Before I go on, I want to share with you the Rambam's words. The Elu Hadvarim Hamefuroshim Batorah. These words, which are clearly spelled out in the Torah, Him Kolalim Kol Hadvarim. This includes all of the things. Shenemru Ayadei Kol Hanavim. The prophets spoke of the glorious future that would come upon us in so many verses, thousands of verses that allude to the coming of Mashiach. The Rambam maintains that Moshe Rabbeinu encapsulated all of these prophecies in these pithy verses. After saying that, the Rambam goes on to say, Af the parashat bilam nemar. In the parsha, which we today call Balak, the, 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 that which contains the extraordinary string of prophecies that Hashem delivered to us through the mouth of a very evil man whose name was Bilam. There, Bilam prophesizes about two anointed redeemers. Mashiach Harishon, Shehu David, the first Mashiach, that's King David. Shehoshia Es Yisrael, Miyad Sarehim, who saved the Jewish people in his time from the hands of their enemies. Ube Mashiach HaAcharein, and the final anointed redeemer. Sheyamid Bibanov, who would arise from his progeny. Shemeshia Es Yisrael, Miad Bnei Esau, who would save the children of Israel from the hands of their Esauvite oppressors. 
And the Rambam begins to go into the details of those verses and it's telling and perhaps compelling to note that Rashi interprets some of those verses slightly differently. But both Rashi and Rambam maintain that Bilam is certainly referring, question in which verse, but certainly referring to the coming of Mashiach. This is highlighted in the commentary of the Lecha Mishnah, who says that Rashi interprets some of the verses, for example, Dorach Kochav Meyakov, a star shoots forth from Jacob, as referring to David HaMelech, and Rambam seems to interpret it as applying to the future Mashiach. The Lecha Mishnah says that clearly it seems we have Midrashim Chalukim, there are different ways of explaining these verses in the Torah, but it is certain that we find this in the Torah itself. Now the Rebbe points out that something fascinating has just unfolded in the words of the Rambam. To be sure, the Rambam speaks to us in terms of halacha. As the Kesef Mishnah says, this chapter, chapter 11, as well as the chapter that follows, speak to us about emunas tovos Bebias HaMashiach, the good faith that we should be placing in the coming of Mashiach. And he says, I really have not very much to say. The Radvaz in his commentary says that everything the Rambam says is mivuar, is explained, expounded from Ksuvim, the scripture, over Divir Rabotenu and the words of our sages in various Midrashim and Agadot. Of course, what's unique here is that the Rambam, in his holy genius, distills this into actual halachic prose. So the Rebbe asks the interesting question. Why does the Rambam need to first quote from the book of Deuteronomy and only afterwards go to the book of Numbers? Parshas Bilam is found in the middle of Chumash Vat Bamidbar. Nitzavim is found near the end of the Torah, in Chumash Devarim. Furthermore, the Rambam himself, after quoting the verses that speak about the coming of Mashiach and Parshas Nitzavim, said, these are the things that include everything the prophets would say later. Eilu hadvarim ha-mifurashim betorah. The Rambam says that before he speaks about Bilam, because the words of Bilam are not mifurash, they are not overt, open, or easily understood. Everything Bilam said was said in a form of parables, oracles, riddles. When Bilam begins to speak, he says, Vayisa Mishola, he begins with a parable. He really can't call it explicit. But the words in Parshas Nisavim are explicit. Well, if the Rambam wants to demonstrate that we have explicit verses in the Torah, and he does, why even bother speaking about the verses that are found in the prophecies of Bilam. So the Rebbe says that there is a tzairach, a profound need for shtei rayos, for two very disparate kinds of proofs from the Chumash itself. The intention of the Rambam first is to establish the concept that Mashiach is going to come that we will walk into a blessed era that will be filled with global peace and universal God consciousness. However, the Rambam wants to establish that for Jewish people, halachically, legally, practically speaking, we are required to have emunah not only in an era, a moment called Mashiach, but also in a man, Melech HaMashiach. In other words... Certainly there is a chiyuv, an obligation, a responsibility for us to believe that everything that we are engaged in and involved in insofar as our Yiddishkeit is concerned leads in a direction. It's all about making our world the godly garden it was always destined to be. And without any doubt, we the Jewish people are called upon to believe that God will indeed redeem the Jewish people. The Rambam is telling us, however, is that we are chayovim lahamin. We are obligated to believe not only in the concept of a messianic era, but specifically in a melech hamashiach. This is important because in the Gemara in Mesechet Sanhedrin, in the 11th chapter called Perek Chelet, on page 99, side A, 
the Gemara records an opinion attributed to the great sage Hillel. Rabbi Hillel Oimer, Ein lahem Mashiach li Yisrael. The Jewish people will not have a Mashiach, he stated. What? The Torah speaks about it. He says, Kvar achalu They lost their opportunity. That possibility was consumed during the days of Chizkiyahu HaMelech. What do you do with the open verses in the Torah? How could Hillel dispute the prophecy of Moshe? Says Rashi, the meaning of Ein Lohem Mashiach, they will not have a Mashiach, means Ela HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yimlech Ba'atzmai. God himself will rule over and bring dominion upon us. V'yigolem, he himself, God himself will restore us to the land of Israel. And, to be sure, it does say that in the verse. Misham Yika Betzecha. It doesn't mention a man called Mashiach in these verses. Now the truth is, Shivim Panim Torah. there are many different facets, many different dimensions and ways, all considered to be Torah true, conceptually speaking. But the halacha is ruled, and that is absolute. And therefore, the words of the Rambam are after the sages had the discussion, analyzed the data, and came to a halachic conclusion. Divri HaRambam writes to Rebbe Heim La'achar She'echriyu Chachamim She'loi Kedvarav The halacha is not like Hillel. She'lochein Therefore Ha'oimer Ata One who would say in today's day and age after the halacha is ruled Kedas Rabbi Hillel Hu Koifer Bechlal HaTayra is considered to be a heretic. This is a ruling of the Chatam Sofer in the section of Yoradea where the Chatham Sofer spells this out in the clearest of terms. And so, our first foundation is that we believe not only in an era, but we are halachically obligated, mandated, to believe that this blessed time will be brought to us by a man who will be called Melech HaMashiach. May he arrive, b'mheira o'biyameinu, speedily, and in our days, Amen. Thanks for joining. Much more to come.